Using AI in school has become such a hot topic recently. Some schools are banning it completely, while others are fully embracing it. It's completely the wild west right now. But one thing is for certain, AI is not going anywhere. And if you aren't using it, you will be at a severe disadvantage. Tools like ChatGPT have the potential to improve the quality of your work and also save you countless hours of time every semester if you know how to use it. And that is exactly why I'm making this video. If you're new around here, my name is Manu. Need, I make videos about book tech and I'm in my second semester of my master's program right now. I'm doing a career change from IT to become a marriage and family therapist. If you're interested in learning more about my career change, what that process has been like, I share all the details in my new book, Lessons from 2024. I just published it a few weeks ago, link down below. But in today's video, I want to talk about ChatGPT and how I'm using this tool to survive grad school. First, I'm going to do a brief introduction to ChatGPT, how to use it, whether or not you should pay for it. And then we'll talk about how to use this tool to actually help with your reading assignments, writing papers, and studying for exams. Let's start by doing a brief introduction to ChatGPT. And honestly, there's so many AI tools out there right now. New ones are coming out every single week. By the time you're watching this, there might be something better out there. With that being said, I do think ChatGPT is the simplest to use and also the most popular. You can access it by going to chatgpt.com and making a free account. Having a free account will give you access to every Thing that you'll need. Just keep in mind if you do stick with the free account, you will eventually run into some daily limits on how much you can use the tool. I ended up buying the Plus subscription, which is right now 20 bucks a month. They also offer a much more expensive pro version, but you definitely don't need that for anything we'll be talking about in this video. Now, one thing I really have to say upfront that you have to know, ChatGPT is not perfect. This thing will get things wrong quite often. I'll ask it a question. It'll just give me completely factually incorrect information very confidently as well. So definitely fact check everything you do with ChatGPT, especially when it comes to school related work. You don't want to be using this for anything that's really important that you aren't fact checking. I also want to very clearly say that using AI to actually do your homework is not at all what I'm advocating for in this video. I'm a big believer in using tools like ChatGPT to become better students, but not as a way to use it as a shortcut to completely replace doing the actual work. That will catch up with you one way or another. Other. So don't use these tools for that purpose. Use it as a way to save time and help you be better as a student. Now with all of that out of the way, let's actually dive into the video now. Let me first show you how to use AI tools to help us with reading assignments. Last semester, I was assigned a book in one of my classes that was just very challenging to read. I don't know what it was, the wording of it, just the style of the writing. I could not get my head wrapped around it. I was not understanding anything I was reading out of this book. At the same time, my professor made it very clear that this this book was very important because it contained a lot of the foundational important information that I would need to know for basic family therapy and systems theory. The only problem was the book was written in a way that I couldn't understand. Now let's say for example I was assigned to read chapter 2 from this book. The easiest thing I could do is simply upload the book to ChatGPT and ask it to summarize chapter 2 for me. This by itself is super helpful. Now I'm not usually a fan of summaries like this because you miss out on a lot of important in details that you would get by actually reading the original text. But for books like this that were just very challenging to read, I find summaries to be super, super helpful. However, last semester, I also quickly realized that I would be learning a whole new language of vocabulary for this new field of family therapy that I was entering. So I began asking ChatGPT to create lists for me of all the important terminology that I should be taking away from my readings. Since ChatGPT has access to the vast knowledge of the internet, it can quickly identify what key terms I should be focusing on from my readings, define them, even if those definitions aren't written in the actual book, it can access those definitions on the internet and provide them in context to my readings. Now, something else that happened a few times last semester is I would get this list of terms from my readings using ChatGPT. It'd be very helpful, but a few of them still wouldn't make much sense. Even though definitions were clearly written there, I still didn't understand the true root of the concept. So I really wanted to dive deeper into a few specific terms. With tools like ChatGPT, I can ask it follow-up questions to elaborate more specifically on things I need help with. So for example, I needed more help last semester with learning more about modernism versus postmodernism. That was a very foundational concept in the field of marriage and family therapy, and it was a little confusing for me. So I asked ChatGPT to elaborate on these terms, and it quickly, within a few seconds, gave me a very detailed breakdown of what these concepts meant. It even made a table 
helpful for me with columns and rows with all the important information I had to know. This was easily one of the best things I did all semester, saved me hours and hours of time from researching things on Google. Now the last example I wanna give is say you are reading the original text of your book and you stumble across one specific section or a paragraph that is just really wordy or doesn't make any sense to you. You can actually use ChatGPT to rewrite these sections for you in a more cohesive way. I find this to be a lot more effective than asking for a summary because it'll literally go sentence by sentence and just rewrite it using simple language. This is so much more effective because you can see what the original text was trying to say, but in more simple words. Now, to be honest, I'm a bit hesitant to talk about this next topic because it's very tempting to ask ChatGPT to just do the work for you and that defeats the whole purpose like we talked about. So I strongly encourage you not to do that. Technically speaking, yes, you can ask ChatGPT to write a paper for you, but this is not at all what I want you to do because you're missing out on the whole point of critically thinking and developing your own thoughts. And I'll also just add, if you do use AI to write papers for you, it is very obvious the language and the tone that AI uses is just so blatantly obvious. You don't want to use that for any of your papers. Instead of going down that road, let me show you a few ethical ways of using AI to save you time while you write so you still get the benefits of it, but you're still doing the actual work on your own. Let me give you another personal example from my classes last semester. I was given an assignment to write a consent form as if I were a practicing therapist opening my own practice in the future. This consent form had to contain very specific information covering all the legalities of being a therapist and making sure your client is fully aware of all the things they have to know. The first thing I did was copy and paste all the assignment details from my syllabus into ChatGPT and asked it to create an outline for me. I'm much more of a visual person, so seeing this as an outline format instead of a bunch of blocks of text on a syllabus was so much easier for me to get understanding for so I know exactly what to write about. Once I had this outline, I started going through it and writing in all the details myself, and most of it I knew pretty easily and could research on my own, but there were a few sections that I had trouble filling out, I didn't know what to write, and in this situation, I could ask ChatGPT for some more help. For example, let's say I was having trouble with the conclusion of this assignment. I could ask ChatGPT to give me some ideas and writing prompts for the conclusion, and it could give me a whole host of ideas. I don't have to use all of them, obviously, but this is a very great starting place for my own writing compared to having nothing at all. One more feature of ChatGPT that I want to show you is called the Canvas feature. Now, I just began using this one more recently, but it's a great way to help with your editing and revising of papers. Say you've just finished writing your paper and now you want some feedback on it to get the editing process started. I've begun treating ChatGPT as my own personal proofreader that can go through my entire paper and give me feedback on anything that I need to. You'll want to start by pressing the little toolbox icon in the chat bar and choosing Canvas. Now, I recommend using a simple prompt like please provide me comments on my grammar and spelling for the paper below and then just paste in your paper. You can press the shift plus enter key a few times to create some space between the prompt and your writing. Just copy and paste in either your whole paper or a section of it and then press the submit button over here. And now ChatGPT will literally open up this Google Doc-like experience where you can see your writing and talk to ChatGPT on the side. Now because you asked it to provide comments on your writing, it will literally go through line by line and give you inline feedback as comments just like you would see as a Google Doc or a Word document using the review features. This is a really, really cool feature because it's so specific. You can go in and continue working on your document in real time and asking ChatGPT for help along the way. This last use case of ChatGPT is one of my absolute favorites. And I gotta say, I probably passed my finals last semester because of this studying feature. It's the ability of using ChatGPT as your personal study partner. During finals last semester, I was feeling really nervous because I wasn't fully prepared for the exam. I do my best studying when I have practice questions to work with, so I knew I was going to use ChatGPT to generate as many practice questions as I possibly could. What I ended up doing was attaching a picture that I took in class one day of a group activity that contained just a few sample questions that might be on the exam, and I also took my full length Word doc of notes that I had 20 plus pages that had just raw information that would also be on the exam. And I asked ChatGPT, use all of this information, use the sample questions, use my notes to generate 
50 more practice questions for me that I can use for studying. ChatGPT did its magic and was able to generate all these questions for me that I can use for my studying now. I suddenly had a full length practice test that I can use to prepare for my exam. I wrote this short prompt to ask ChatGPT to go through each question that it provided one by one and just basically give me the explanation for each question. Tell me whether I'm right or wrong. Give me the chance to answer it before you give me the answer. And this is a really great way of just studying all the information in a very clear and realistic way, honestly. I really enjoy studying this way because it felt like I had a partner on the other end who was cheering me on. And to make things even more fun, you could also ask ChatGPT to provide a little extra encouragement in their responses so it feels even more human-like and a bit more of a personal touch. I hope you found this video useful in using AI to improve your student studying skills. Now, there's so many other ways you can use ChatGPT. This is just the tip of the iceberg. If you find any other ways of using it to help with your assignments or your study, Studying, leave a comment down below. I would love to learn from you as well. And also, if you are reading a lot for school right now, I have a whole video that talks about different ways you can actually use book tech to remember everything that you read. The worst thing is reading something and then forgetting everything that you read just a few days or a few weeks later. I have a whole video that talks about this problem. Link for that on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.